Hello, welcome back to the channel. And we are now into June, so it's time to look back at May and do my recap on the power that I've generated um, from my solar panels and how I've used that power and how that, or that energy, I suppose, and how I've used that energy in the house and how much it's saved me, how much we've exported, and um, anything to talk about the efficiency of the solar panels. But before I start, first of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to everybody who subscribed. I've now passed 500 subscribers. So since I started really doing a bit of effort into this channel um, in September last year, uh, my subscribership has gone up by 480 people. Um, so it's really good to have so many people starting to watch these videos and subscribe in. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Um, it would be really nice to get um, to that thousand subscriber point because then I can monetize this um, this channel and also the um, ad I can then take money from the adverts that appear before them. So I know there's always adverts that appear before my videos, and this. Um, the money from that goes purely to YouTube. So yeah, if you are watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, go down below, hit that um, subscribe button. If you hit the notification icon, you also get a notification every time I upload. So secondly, um, over the past month, obviously you've probably noticed I've been releasing a few less videos. Normally I try to release at least two videos a week, one on the solar stuff and my solar journey and the other on something to do with maths um, as part of my tutoring. Um, if you noticed over the few past few weeks, um, those numbers have dropped, um, and that's because I've started a new job. I've gone back to Swansea University two days a week and employed in um, a research group uh, looking at nano, uh, looking at the creation of nanoparticles. So, as always, when you start a new job, you're a bit hectic for those first couple of weeks. So my time has been taken up with that, and also due to it being exam season for A level um, and GCSE. Um, I've had a, um, been getting basically a lot of students um, who are looking for uh, maths and physics tuition. But um, over the next few weeks now, that's starting to die down as the A-levels finish over the next two weeks. And then I'll be able to go back to making the uh, usual number of videos. Anyway, now let's look back at um, May. So in Swansea in May, we've had pretty much wall-to-wall -wall sunshine throughout the month. And that's been hitting our 4.6 kilowatt um, of uh, solar panels. They're 12 Q cell solar panels. They're south on a south facing roof, so they're pretty much ideal. That field feeds into a 5 kilowatt solace inverter, and that then goes into the house or gets stored in a 5 kilowatt hour pure drive battery. So that goes over the system details. So let's go straight into the numbers. So this is what our graph for solar generation looks like um, on a day-to-day -day basis. As you can see, lots of days up at around that 25 to 30 kilowatt hour. There's a few days earlier on in the month, such as around the 9th, which was the bank holiday, when we had a very low generation, but the rest of the days, far more than what our average daily usage of six to seven kilowatt hours um, is. So the total generation we had in um, June was 700 and let me get the number up and um, 53 kilowatt hours and this number is taken from the Solis Cloud app each day I measure um, I record how much was generated and then just adding it up to get that number if you watch my previous video which I released last week I was actually having a rant and a moan about the new Solis updates um, so I'll link that video just up here probably just up here um, and yeah I'm not convinced about the accuracy of that number if I go into the um, my Solis app and look at the generation for um, May let me just get it up and this is on the monthly view rather than the daily view so here is it gone there it is it said I generated 460 kilowatt hours, which actually tallies reasonably well with the number on this. But as you'll see later, the, um, you'll see why I'm not totally convinced about the numbers. Anyway, so we think probably about 450, 460 kilowatt hours done. Um, the discrepancy between the um, app and my spreadsheet is just due to round hours within the app. Um, and that's covered in that previous video. 
So let's see how that energy um, was used. So in this graph, you've got uh, a breakdown on import in red. So you can see we only imported on the 8th and 9th of May, which were those days when it was particularly cloudy. Um, and also we had friends over, we were using the projector, we were using the oven a lot, so we had to import just because we'd run down the battery, uh, just due to the lack of sun on the um, 9th. Um, in blue we have the export, so you can see we're having a huge amount of export each day, and we'll come on to the complete export figures later on. In Green, we have what we call the self-use, which is uh, energy being used in real time. So it's been uh, generated on the roof and that power is going straight into devices within the home to be used. Um, so power in the fridge, power in the oven. Ideally, you want that to be as big as possible um, and that requires lifestyle changes, but we're just producing so much energy in May that that gets sort of distorted massively by the export. And then the yellow is from the battery, so this is energy we stored in the battery and then use in throughout the night and the day um, when it's slightly cloudy. Um, and you can see that is fairly consistent. Um, we should, I also should say that because of the new um, Solis app update, I can't go back and get an accurate measure of the consumption or my energy usage on a day-to-day -day basis, including the battery discharge and uh, charging which I used to do so about halfway through the month that's when that changed so these figures should be taken with a pinch of salt because I just have to record them just before I go to bed which is normally about half ten so it's not ideal uh, as I say in that video I really want Solace to go back and actually sort their app out so it's actually accurate anyway let's have a look at how that actually translates um, into uh, money and export so The total, as I say, the total generation was about 760. The, um, the amount of import we've had this month was 7 kilowatt hours. And the amount of our own energy we've used, whether that's by the battery or in real time, was 203 kilowatt hours. So that totals 210 kilowatt hours we've used in the month. And that um, tallies well with our average, which is about 200 kilowatt hours. This month we were... Um, using a little bit more electricity because we were doing a little bit more washing and we were making sure when we were cooking we were using the oven rather than the gas hob because we had so much electricity. Sort of things like lawn mowing and we were doing work in the patio which included some using home tools to break all that sort of stuff up. So our uh, electricity usage is a little bit more than usual but not um, what would be known as uh, significant. So how does that then translate into money? So let's do the export first. We exported, I think, about 570 uh, uh, kilowatt hours, which, um, from my um, actual calculations, um, which actually tallies with the app, um, which says um, 780 kilowatt hours. And that would uh, generate me on my SO Energy uh, export tariff which pays 5p per kilowatt hour of 28 pounds and uh, 84 pence and you can see that in blue for our import we use uh, british gas and we're paying about 20p per kilowatt hour because we fixed several years ago and that's fixed through until march next year um, so that's seven kilowatt hours that we've imported has cost us one pound 32 so our total electricity import for the month was only one pound 32 that's excluding the stand in charge, which is about 23 to 24p a day. So I'm not including that because I can't do anything about that with my solar panels. And then the 203 kilowatt hours that we've generated ourselves, if we were paying British gas for that, at that 20p per kilowatt hour, it would have uh, cost us £39.88. So our total money, money in which is that £39.88 pence added to that £28.84 pence is, comes to £68.72. Pence. So that's basically what the payback is from our solar panel is just from the month of May. And things look better, um, should be better in June, we're getting longer days, we should get more sun. Um, one thing I have noticed though is the actual power output from my 
uh, solar panels, especially on the hot days, has never been hit in the peak of that 4.65 kilowatt hours. Um, and I'm assuming that is just because of the heat. When the solar panels are hot, they are slightly less efficient. But it doesn't really matter because we produce, it's such a consistent um, high value of power production, then it's absolutely fine. Um, we have had seen days though when, um, especially early morning when it's been a bit cooler, but we're still getting a lot of high sun, the power we've been getting is above that 4.65. Again, um, that each panel is meant to be put out um, 385 kilowatt, uh, sorry, 385 watts. Um, but that's sort of an average and just because of the nature of semiconductors and the silicon, it can vary from panel to panel, so they can be what appears to be more than 100% efficient. So some days we have actually had up to about five uh, kilowatts of power being produced at any one moment for a short period of time. Um, so that's been uh, all very good. So when I said um, I want to take these values with a pinch of salt, the problem that uh, I have is that I've generated 760. Um, of that, I've used roughly 200, so that leaves, leaves 560 left. But my export is, according to the app, at 580. So where did that extra 20 kilowatt hours come from? Is that just rounding hours because it only is sort of a 3% error? Um, or is there something gone wrong somewhere in the app and it's not adding things quite up correctly? I've checked with my export meter and the value I've got for my export when I add them all up and compare to the export meter is the same. It's within two kilowatt hours over a value of two, um, 1,900 kilowatt hours. So 0.1% um, of um, accuracy there. So it's not that. So that's why I'm a little bit suspicious about the generation figure of this 760 or 753. Maybe it should be a little bit higher than what it's actually reading in the um, app and maybe that's something to do with um, just the general efficiency of the um, inverter when it's operating at such high powers constantly but it's something to keep an eye on anyway the final figure for today or final matrix to, matrix -y to see um, just how well the solar panels is working this month we were 3.2 percent reliant on the grid and that's not the best month we've had to date that was last month where we were two point 82% reliant on the grid, but that month we did have less um, use throughout um, by about uh, over 10% less use. We only um, used um, 187 kilowatt hours last month. So, yeah, that's been my monthly review. Um, so, June has been very, very good. Oh, you might be asking, normally I compare to some values from last year. Um, so I was doing that prediction from, or using, comparing to my prediction from January where I was um, made a prediction that months at the tail end of the year were comparable to months at the start of the year. So I could predict what my payback would be from this year, or the money in, and just trying to plan my life from that. Um, I said June should be very similar to August, but I, I didn't have full data from August, so I've got nothing to really compare from. All I can say is this month we generated 250 more kilowatt hours more than last month, which was our best month to date. Anyway, so thank you for watching. As I say, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you in another video very soon.